Parker, expected approach time 34, approach button 17, the altimeter 29 or 9 or 7. Welcome back to the channel everyone, another Friday rolls around and therefore it's time to digest the goodies released in this week's newsletter from Eagle Dynamics. That's right, it's another DCS situation report from Prickly Hedgehog. Well, once again the Cold War fans will be happy as this week ED announced that we have yet another module coming to the game, this time the F-100D Super Sabre by Grinelli Designs. Nicknamed the Hun, which is not short for honey, nor the old British and Commonwealth slang term for Germans, primarily during World War I, but it is short for the 100, since the aircraft is part of the Century series of planes designed as an improvement over the F-86 Sabre by the US Air Force in the 1950s. Now the D variant saw further enhancement and improvement over the early variants of the aircraft with a larger wing area, tail surface and flaps. Now this was largely to compensate for instability found in the earlier aircraft where the jet in certain circumstances could get into a situation known as a sabre dance and there were indeed some accidents and indeed the death of a test pilot when one of the aircraft disintegrated so these improvements were to prevent some of those problems now in addition to the exterior modifications the d also sported an upgraded avionics suite featuring the ANAJB-1B low altitude bombing system and an ANAPR-25 radar homing and warning system. The F-100D has four 20mm Pontiac M3-9A1 cannons and it has six hardpoints capable of carrying AIM-9 sidewinders, LAU-3A unguided rocket pods and conventional bombs and it's my understanding that the aircraft was meant to be a fighter bomber air to ground being one of its primary mission roles. As a result, it flew extensively over Vietnam as the United States' Air Force's primary CAS or close air support jet, and it was in service for 17 years and flew over 360,000 combat sorties before it was retired in 1971. Now the Grinelli team hoped to produce the most faithful recreation of the Hun ever produced for flight simulation. They are working with veteran Hun pilots the Grinelli team is dedicated to simulating the avionics systems, weapons, performance, and the unique flight model in high fidelity, which is exciting news. Now, this development took me by surprise, so we shall see how the aircraft's development progresses over the coming months. We have no announcement on potential release dates just yet, but one thing is for sure, the Enigma server team, I am sure, are rubbing their hands together with glee. The list of aircraft joining the Cold War era seems to be increasing on an almost weekly basis of late and sparking popular interest among many community members eager for the full fidelity experience of jets from a bygone era. As you can see from the blurb, I guess we can expect a pretty exciting fast aircraft is going to be capable of ground pounding and I understand that the early Sabre program was fraught with danger with a lot of accidents attributed as mentioned to the handling characteristics of the aircraft and I expect therefore that this should be a challenge to fly especially in low speed configurations. So we'll see what they come up with. Let me know what you think of yet another Cold War aircraft in DCS world in the guise of the F-100D and bear in mind that the team also have, Grinelli that is, have some success with mods in the game already so they're not unfamiliar with the franchise, they're not unfamiliar with Eagle Dynamics and how the software functions for development of mods and other objects and things in the game so we should expect a pretty high quality product and it will be interesting to see just how that comes to fruition in the game. Again, let me know what you think. While you guys are inbound, I'm going to go AFK and get some snacks. Right. Do you know what you guys want me to get you anything? I'm good for now, thank you. Cool. Now, in line with the Cold War 
Era, I have had requests from various people regarding the MiG-17 program, and this is a jet by Red Star Simulations. Now, at this time, I don't believe there are any new or major revelations to make since an earlier video that I made earlier this year. Perhaps Red Star can reach out. I did try to send an email to them, but it seemed to bounce back. The link seemed to be out of date. Hopefully that's just a glitch. Stay tuned, in other words, but I'm not really sure at this time if there are any major updates to that aircraft, if it's still chugging along as expected, uh, if they've taken a hiatus over the summer, or you know they've got other things going on, and we'll get back to it. So uh, at this time, I don't see any, as I said, major revelations indicating that there has been uh, a need to update us or uh, that work has stopped or anything like that. So stay tuned, in other words, is the, is the simple answer for now. Now, moving on to other news, I guess on another Cold War stalwart and one of the rotary kind, ED, of course, are continuing with improvements and tweaks to the MI-24 p Hine, which is good news. Now, in this case, they are referring to the first set of Petrovich AI voiceovers, which are planned to be included in the next open beta patch, which I believe should be next week. To find the sweet spot, they have made recordings starring two former military pilots with Slavic accents to provide authentic and informative voiceovers. This will bring the number of spoken phrases to a similar level as in the Apache. They intend to add new voiceovers for both helicopter crew AIs in future updates and will be monitoring our feedback basically on how we enjoy them. So do provide some feedback then when that comes out. And they also plan to support switching between voiceover languages in the special tab settings. And when that is done, they also plan therefore to add Russian language voiceovers to the hind as well. So lots of good things to look forward to there. Now, as, as part of this enhancement, they have done some work to the ATGM site after receiving some new data about it. The first change to the ATGM site and guidance under its control axis properties has uh, will be introduced. Now, the control voltage is used to move the gyro stabilized aiming axis of the 9K113 system. There is a limit to how low it can be and the minimum speed that the motors driving the unit can move. The minimum speed of the system is 0 0.07 degrees per second. They've implemented this limitation for the hind and it will be available again in the next open beta patch. Operators will mostly feel the difference in scenarios where the ATGM system is used at maximum range and when the target is small or moving at a speed that matches or is below the minimum aiming access speed. So that should be interesting. Let me know what you think of the hind and its improvements. And if you have experience with that, I haven't really played all that much with the hind for quite a while. I've been unfortunately buried in other projects, home projects, and of course, uh, work with the Air Warfare Group on some CSAR stuff that we we're doing, which required me to try to get up to speed with the Warthog which was a bit of a mission, I must say. I didn't quite get there. I wasn't quite as advanced as I would, would have liked to have been. I was a little bit sluggish, just got too busy, but it was nonetheless a nice challenge to get involved with that and try to build my knowledge of operating that aircraft, which is still one of my favorites, actually. It's, uh, I've really grown to like the Hawk. Uh, it's not the flashiest aircraft. It's certainly not the fastest, but I enjoy the firepower that it can bring and also the massive electronic suite that it has, which is really cool for interacting with another pilot, being able to set up speeds and share information about targets. It's a pretty sophisticated system. Who is what? Roger, squid one one, three o'clock, high, 9,000 feet, outbound, 270. All right, well, the last update from the newsletter mentions the ongoing improvements to the AI B-52 which as you can see is looking pretty incredible. Now the attention to detail here that ED have pointed out is pretty impressive given it's a non-flyable aircraft. Now as previously mentioned in other videos, this work centers on several assets in the game that are AI, including the B-1 Lancer Bomber and of course the S-3 Viking, which we have discussed previously. So this is a significant boost to our immersive experiences especially where these aircraft are part of mission sets and campaigns or used in player versus environment servers, so on and so forth. And any enhance enhancements like this are obviously beneficial for the game and for our player experiences. So good news, let me know what you think. 
I guess that really wraps up the newsletter, but of course, not entirely the news cycle, which is, as you can tell, becoming increasingly broad. With so many developers joining the fray right now. Of course, we have a swag of free mods as well. I just re-downloaded the, the UH60 mod recently, and I haven't had a chance to really play with that either. Uh, so we have a lot of aircraft in the game, a lot of third-party developers, and it seems to me that more and more are getting on board, and this is good news. We've talked about map developers recently. We're obviously talking about module makers for full fidelity aircraft. And of course, ED has its own in-house projects as well. One of those, of course, is the F-16 and WAGS was up to his usual tricks, of course, with regards to enhancement to the F-16C and additions to the aircraft's weapon systems. And there are a couple worth mentioning. One, of course, was the bomb tossing queue system, which was posted a few weeks ago. And yesterday he put up another detailed video on laser designation. So this is pretty complex stuff too with regards to uh, the modeling of the symbology and also the modeling of the weapon. So it's not just the symbology in the aircraft's HUD. They've also got to match that to the environment. They've also got to make sure that the weapons behave accordingly, especially once you start throwing them up in the air, they start doing slightly different things. So it provides some new variables that need to be properly programmed and it's really really interesting stuff i don't think it's uh, always uh, appreciated by the community sometimes uh, just how difficult some of this stuff is and i mentioned that to wags and he, he he did alert me to how much work that is so consider that uh, there's a lot of back office stuff that goes on sometimes that we don't really get to see just how much number crunching and work goes on to make sure that these things work properly. And of course, sometimes they don't always, and there are bugs and so on and so forth, and things need to be corrected with community feedback and uh, interaction with the developers. But again, a little bit of a plug there for the work that Wax does, which is regarded as very, very good, and um, not only in the community, of course, but also from professionals in the industry who uh, have, have given him praise for the work that he does. So. A little nod to wags there. I'll throw those links up again so that you can check that out for yourself. Well worth a look if you're interested in the F-16, which is coming along pretty nicely uh, after a you know rough start initially. But the aircraft is really showing uh, the potency that it has and its potential potency in the game. So a great, great aircraft. All right. I think that does it for this week. Uh, it brings us to the end, unfortunately, of another DCS sit wrap. Just a short one. Thanks for tuning in and supporting the channel as always. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe for more news and of course, comment below. Don't forget there is the super thanks button too. If you really want to support the channel just a little bit more, it's obviously appreciated, not expected. I hope once the summer settles down that I can bring you more content. Of course, I'm extremely busy right now. The Warford Group and I will be moving into a new theater of training this fall. So hopefully we can also bring you some content from those adventures. The early adventures I have had in re-familiarizing myself with Carrier Ops was pretty hairy, so stay tuned. And I want to thank Baltic Dragon here too, who sent me one of his cool patches that arrived in the mail today all the way from Europe, which was cool. So looking forward to future campaigns by him and Reflected, both in co-op. Uh, they're working on missions together and campaigns together and also the individual programs that they're working on as well. They're coming soon. Take care. We'll see you next time on the DCS Situation Report. November 5588 Papa, radar contact to five miles northeast and north, clear to Las Vegas, Cross Bravo airspace, we have present heading. There's Bravo airspace, uh, maintain uh, turn, heading, heading Papa. Number 206, maintain 7,000. Number 80 Papa, maintain 6,500 for traffic. Number 8 Papa, traffic 12 to 1 o'clock, 5 miles westbound, uh, T, or sorry, C206 at 8,077,000. Uh, keep an eye on that traffic, 8 Papa.